as well as controlling all aircraft, aerodrome controllers are mandated to control the movement of pedestrians and vehicles on the manoeuvring area of controlled aerodromes. And this may require two-way communications to be established at all times. Entry to runways may require additional authorization, and all vehicles and pedestrians must obey visual and radio transmissions or signals from the control tower. All vehicles and pedestrians must give way to aircraft landing, taxiing or taking off, except emergency vehicles going to an incident, in which case all other traffic is stopped. When an aircraft is landing or taking off, vehicles shall not be permitted to hold closer to the runway in use than at a taxiway runway intersection, at a runway holding position, and at a location other than a taxiway runway intersection, at a distance equal to the separation distance of the runway holding position. Because the view from a modern airliner's cockpit is often limited, and modern airport taxi routes are often complex, aerodrome controllers will issue instructions and information to pilots that enable them to determine the correct taxi route and avoid hazards. Aerodrome control is concerned primarily with aircraft movements, particularly those in the immediate vicinity of the aerodrome. To remind you of the formal aerodrome circuit, we show it here again, with the mandatory reporting positions marked upon it. Any pilot flying in the visual circuit of an aerodrome is responsible for his own separation and circuit discipline. However, the local aerodrome controllers will impose direction to circuit traffic to provide separation between it and departing or arriving traffic, both with visual flight rules and instrument flight rules. Clearance to enter the traffic circuit will be given to aircraft not making a straight-in approach. Pilots must remember that aircraft in an emergency may enter the aerodrome traffic circuit without prior clearance, so a good lookout is always essential. Priority for landing will be given to aircraft in an emergency, and controllers should attempt to quickly recognise such situations and offer all assistance. But in other circumstances, priority for landing will be given in the following manner. Aircraft being compelled to land because of factors affecting the safety of the aircraft, like an engine failure or fuel problem. Hospital aircraft or aircraft carrying sick or injured people requiring urgent medical attention, aircraft engaged in search and rescue operations, other aircraft as determined by the authorities. Departing aircraft are strictly controlled by the aerodrome controller. They will not normally be allowed to commence takeoff until any preceding aircraft has become airborne and has crossed the departure end of the runway in use. Additionally, aircraft will not be held closer to the runway in use than at a holding position. Aircraft may be permitted to enter the runway and hold during landing operations after a landing aircraft has passed the intended landing point. An aircraft may be issued with the instruction to enter the runway with a clearance for immediate departure. The aircraft should taxi onto the runway and commence takeoff in one continuous movement. Now we will examine the controls placed on arriving aircraft by the aerodrome controller. A landing aircraft will not normally be allowed to cross the threshold of the landing runway on its final approach until the preceding departing aircraft is airborne and has crossed the departure end of the runway, started a turn or a landing aircraft has reported that the runway is vacated.
On some occasions, when aircraft are using the same runway, a landing aircraft may be permitted to touch down before the preceding aircraft is clear of the runway. Obviously, this has to be controlled, and air traffic control will provide a warning by issuing the landing aircraft with the instruction, land after the whatever type of aircraft, instead of the usual clear to land instruction. The responsibility for ensuring safety rests with the landing pilot, but the whole procedure will be permitted if the runway is long enough to provide safe separation and nothing on the runway will affect efficient aircraft braking, it is daylight, the controller is satisfied that the landing aircraft will be able to see the preceding aircraft clearly and continuously until it has vacated the runway, the pilot of the landing aircraft is aware of the situation. Whenever the continued safe operation of aircraft at an aerodrome is jeopardized, for whatever reason, then the aerodrome controllers, air traffic services authority, or area control centers may suspend all operations. Similarly, whenever visual flight rule operations are suspended due to deteriorating weather conditions, the following procedures will be observed by the aerodrome control tower. Hold or departures, other than those who have filed IFR flight plans, approved by the Area Control Center. Recall or local VFR flights or obtain special VFR operations. Notify the Area Control Center of the action taken. Notify all the aerodrome operators. You will be aware from other lessons that normally only aircraft conforming with IFR and under full air traffic control may enter controlled airspace. However, special VFR flights may be authorized when traffic conditions permit. All such requests are considered on an individual basis. Separation is always applied between all IFR flights and special VFR flights and, when required by the authority, between all special VFR flights. Special VFR flights are not permitted to take off and depart from a control zone, to enter a control zone for the purpose of landing, to cross a control zone, or to operate locally within a control zone, unless the ground visibility is greater than that specified. In accordance with PANS ATM, ground visibility of not less than 1500 meters, in accordance with JAR OPS 1.465, not to commence if the ground visibility is less than 3 kilometers and when flight visibility is less than 1500 meters.